We're a couple of weeks away from knowing how the 2023 NFL draft is going to play out. So I want to do a mock draft for the YouTube channel. I'm uh, going to use the Pro Football Network mock draft simulator just to show you everything that I'm doing. It's not a simulation. I'm going to make every pick, but go and check out the mock draft simulator. It's the best on the internet. So first overall, Bryce Young, for foregone conclusion to the Panthers. Number two, I've got Will Anderson going to the Texans. Bria, Schefter, Zeeland all talking about defender at number two. Um, Michael Lombardi's been talking about CJ Stroud, not the easiest guy to coach. We've seen, you know, a lot of buzz around the Texans taking defender at number two. I still think it'll be Will Anderson. There's an Alabama connection there with D'Amico Ryans. I think he's better than Tyree Wilson. Don't forget that Mike Sando did a an executive's mock draft right after the combine. And one of the executives said there that Young, Stroud and Anderson would be the top three, but the order is all over the place. It could be anything. And he insinuated that exec executive that Will Anderson could essentially be the number two overall pick. And I did a mock draft on March the 9th that had Anderson at number two. So this is not a new idea. You know, people are acting like this is a new thing. You know, the Texans might take a defender here. We've been talking about it for over a month. And um, look, if it happens, it happens. It's not what I would do. But, you know, the Texans taking a defender here seems to be more likely than, than perhaps people thought a few weeks ago. I am going to do trades in this mock draft. And I'm going to have the Washington Commanders moving up here to the number three pick. Now, ignore the compensation. I'm just going to do whatever it takes to force these, these trades through. What, what it would cost, I think, is the number 16 pick for Washington, number 47, and the first round of next year to move up 13 spots, at least. I mean, there's probably more on top of that, but I'm not going to get into the to the to the bones of what a trade would look like. I just want to make sure that I can execute these things so I can carry on with the mock draft. So Washington moving up. I don't think Eric enemy has gone there to coach Sam Howell. I don't think Washington truly believes that a fifth round pick is going to be their franchise quarterback. I think they could be aggressive. They're just sort of lurking in the tall grass to see if Stroud lasts there. And then I won't be surprised if Washington makes their big move and goes and gets CJ Stroud. Number four, I think the Colts have settled on Will Levis. I think they've settled on it for a long time. I think they've decided that Maybe Levis is their number two QB and they like Stroud and they're comfortable with either. And they think Will Anderson's going to go in the top three. So they know that one of the quarterbacks they like is going to be there and Will Levis can start quickly, unlike Anthony Richardson. And I think people have just been ridiculous about Will Levis over the last few weeks. And he, you know, Chris Morton said he's going to be a top five pick. He said that he's not getting out of the top five. And I agree with him. And I think Will Levis will go at number four. So the Seahawks number five, you know, there's a whole bunch of people be going, ah, oh, Jalen Carter here. Like, I've gone through ad nauseum. Why I don't think the Seahawks are going to consider Jalen Carter. Go and check out my other videos on that. I'm not going to rehash everything here, but I don't expect the Seahawks to draft Jalen Carter. Um, Tyree Wilson, for me, would be a massively underwhelming pick. And I just think from a Seahawks perspective, you're at number five. You've talked about how rare this opportunity is. I think that if Will Anderson lasts at number five, they'll run to the podium. I think Will Anderson's probably the guy that they want more than any other. But if he's gone and if Stroud's gone, I think they're going to take Anthony Richardson. And look, the, the profile, the physical talent there is unbelievable. He he is comparable physically to a Josh Allen, who we know that John Schneider loved. Pete Carroll seems to have taken a shine to Richardson. I think there's a legit chance that the Seahawks will draft him. I don't think he's the top player on their board. I think if Anderson lasted to five or CJ Stroud, for example, maybe even Will Levis they would go in a different direction. But I think if it comes down to this scenario that we're looking at here, I think Anthony Richardson will be the pick. So that's what I've gone with. And bring on the comments uh, that are going to be coming my way after doing this video. Uh, number six for Detroit. Dan Campbell's talked about wanting people who are going to eat your kneecaps on his team. That's Devin Witherspoon for me. The hardest hitter in the draft for a physical player. And uh, having traded away Jeff Okuda, it just leaves the door open to add another quarterback at number six. Number seven, uh, the Raiders. I've got them taking Christian Gonzalez, the other cornerback who's, who's going to go early. He just got that Patriots vibe for me. And why not send him to the Patriots West? Falcons at number eight. They're a big best player available team. And someone will go, well, Jalen Carter's the best player available. Again, you know, I don't think... You know, doing a bit of study about Terry Fontenot and what he's been doing in his short tenure as a, as a GM and some of his background, I don't think he's going to roll the dice on Jalen Carter. And I also don't think it's the best thing for Jalen Carter to stay in Georgia. I think he needs to, to go somewhere else. So I don't think they're going to take that. A lot of teams are going to have Bijan Robinson, the running back from Texas, 
very, very high on their boards, like top three player in the draft. The Atlanta Falcons took a tight end in the top five. So in terms of positional value, they are willing to take very talented non premium positions very early. That's why I think the Falcons are going to take B. John Robinson here. And then what an offense they're setting up. I mean, I'm not a big Desmond Ridder fan, but he's got great tight end, top 10 receiver and a top 10 running back. He can have no excuses moving forward. I'm going to do another trade here. So the, the Bears already moved down from one to nine. I'm going to have them trading back again. Now, this has been uh, a, a rumor that has been doing the rounds and it's it's been discussed by some credible people and I'm buying all into it, that the Steelers could move up to number nine from this spot. Now, I think it could be, and, and again, ignore the compensation. I think it might cost them the number 32 overall pick to move up to number 17, which 32 overall pick was Chicago's in the first place. Um, they traded that for the receiver that they got from Pittsburgh. So, you know, I, I it, it's funny how that pick keeps swapping hands between these two teams, but I've just got a feeling I'm just going to try and force this, this trade through. Ignore all that stuff. I've just got a feeling that if Jalen Carter lasts this long, maybe the Steelers will go up for him. It's It's got Mike Tomlin written all over this. Mike Tomlin's exactly the type of guy who would take a chance on Jalen Carter. The Steelers are the kind of franchise that if this didn't work out, no, none of their fans are going to be rocking up at the stadium with pitchforks out. You know, there's, there's enough money in the bank with that franchise to take a chance on Jalen Carter. And I think their fans will accept it. I think the team will accept it. Uh, I, I can imagine that if Jalen Carter lasts this long, the Steelers move into the top 10 and take him off the toes of the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm going to have Jalen Carter going at number nine to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And look, they have... They, they, Tomlin has always been prepared to deal with situations like this. You know, people conflate the Seahawks taking chances on people. The, the Seahawks are only ever taking chances on character question marks who had high football character. You know, people like to cite Frank Clark. They took a chance on Frank Clark. Well, nobody would deny Frank Clark's attitude on the field or attitude towards practice or anything like that. You know, you've got to seriously question whether Jalen Carter loves the game. And it's the way he's applied his career and all that stuff, this is a very different type of player. You know, this is a guy who picks and chooses when he wants to go to practice, kind of did what he wanted at Georgia. And as long as he rocked up on a Saturday to play the game, they didn't really care. That's how they managed him at Georgia. So that's not like Frank Clark. It just isn't. So look at the Steelers, Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, people like that have dealt with in the past. James Harrison, you know, they're, they're used to dealing with these types of people. So um, I think the Steelers are a good fit for Jalen Carter and I can see them moving up to get him if he lasts this long. Number 10. Uh, if, if it, I, I, Tyree Wilson, look, I get it. The length, intriguing. I think he's just a bull rusher at this point. Not denying that the the size and the length means that he could be a lot more than that with proper coaching, but he's already 23 years old. He's going to Texas A&M. Uh, he's gone to Texas Tech in the Big 12, which is an easier division to play in and into conference to play in. And, and I'm just not I'm not as sold on him being this like top defender in the draft, like a, you know like Chris Sims is saying, for example, or you know Lance Eel in his mock draft in that. I think he's more of a 10 to 15 talent in this draft class, and I've got him going at number 10 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Number 11, start the run on the offensive lineman. I have got Darnell Wright going in this spot. I think he is the best offensive uh, tackle in this draft. And I've got him at number 11 to the Tennessee Titans. Number 12, I'm not sold on Nolan Smith personally. I, I just I don't know what his position is. And I, I think he's a difficult player to project. However, I can imagine D'Amico Ryan's seeing himself in Nolan Smith converting him into a linebacker and, you know, taking him and Will Anderson to supercharge a defence. That's how they succeeded in San Francisco with D'Amico Ryans, and, and I could see that being the plan here as well. Number 13 with the Jets, Joe Douglas likes explosive offensive linemen, and Broderick Jones was an explosive tester at the Combine. Number 14, the Patriots, I'm going to have them taking Peter Skaronski. Technically talented, might have to kick inside, play guard or center. That's that, I'm sure the, the Pats will be comfortable with that. He he feels like the kind of player that they would draft. 
Number 15, I've got Michael Mayer going to the Packers. I don't really understand why Mayer gets so much criticism. I think he's a fantastic player, one of the safest picks in the draft, very talented uh, player, and I think he'd be a, a fantastic fit for the Packers. Number 16, Arizona. So they traded down from number three, big drop, got some extra stock. Miles Murphy, defensive end, good scheme fit. This is the kind of range. His testing's great. His tape for me was pretty rubbish. Uh, but at number 16, I think, you know, this is the kind of range, you know, is that sort of Rashawn Gary type player, very athletic, but tape questionable. This is the kind of range where I would expect him to go and the Cardinals take him here. So the Bears have moved from one to nine, now to 17. They've got a haul of picks. Look at these picks that they've got, 17, 32, 53, 61, 64, and future stock as well. And they've got um, the receiver from Carolina. So they've, they've, they've got a lot of stock here. Now they've got to use it. I think they could take an offensive lineman here at number 17, Paris Johnson Jr., left tackle, who can, who's got great length. I was sort of underwhelmed by his tape. That said, great length, great size, prototype size. Can imagine somebody really liking him here. Number 18, I've got a player that I'm not completely sold on, Lucas Van Ness. Didn't start at Iowa. Yes, he's got flashes on tape. Yes, he's got a great testing profile, but he didn't start at Iowa. And I, and I want to know why. He wasn't more involved there. Uh, so I, I, I've had him in the past going in the early second round, and I still think that's a possibility. I keep seeing people putting him in the top 10 or 12. I'm not sure about that. Maybe there's a middle ground there where someone will take him in this kind of range in the late teens. Number 19, another offensive tackle off the board, Anton Harrison. I, I like him more than some of the others. I like him more than Paris Johnson. I like him more than Broderick Jones. I think this is a, a possible range where they could plug him in. Great run defender. I think there's a lot of potential there with him. Will be a good pick for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have a hole at left tackle. Uh, number 20, the Seahawks. I'm going to have them trading down here. We don't have a receiver off the board yet. Uh, and I think somebody could come up. And I think that somebody is going to be the Buffalo Bills in this instance, in a trade with the Seattle Seahawks, who are reportedly already shopping that pick. Let's see if I can just do a realistic trade anyway. No, so I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to fudge it a little bit here. So the Bills coming up with the Seahawks. Eight picks. Again, I'm just ignore the stock. I'm just doing this to, to get the trade through. So the actual trade would be 91 to move up seven spots. Forget that. That's just going to make sure that it gets through. So Bills move up. It's what their fans want them to do, I think. They want to see a big splash. Let's go and have them moving up to get Jackson Smith and Jigba for that offense. I don't think the Seahawks would be that interested in him, by the way. I mean, he barely ran a 4-5 on a fast track at Ohio State's Pro Day. The Seahawks have never taken anybody who runs slower than a 4.4 in the early rounds. So I just don't see it. He's, he's not quick enough. His agility's great. Doesn't have the suddenness that Seattle looks for, though. Chargers at 21 because Miami at, at 21 forfeited their pick, so the Chargers jump up a spot. Um, Brandon Staley's defense was the number one in the league when they had Aaron Donald. Kalijah Kansi at number 21. Take a chance to see if he can help recreate that. So I've got Kansi going at 21 to the Chargers. Ravens at 23. Going to have them taking a local prospect, Deontay Banks, fantastic tester, cornerback from Maryland, here with the 22nd pick. Minnesota Vikings, another cornerback, Joey Porter Jr., talented player, very mature, skilled, long, good pick for the Vikings here at 23. 24 for Jacksonville. I am going to have them taking Adetamiwa Adabawore. I think someone's going to take him between 20 and 30. And I think the Jaguars are a good shout to do that. Fills a need. Very fast, very agile, very explosive, great length, great senior bowl. Could see him going in this range. The Giants at 25. A lot of talk that they simply love John Michael Schmitz, the centre. They need a centre badly, and they could just take him here and say, job done. 26 for the Giants. Sorry, 26 for the Cowboys. The, the talk on the street is that Jerry Jones wants explosive, entertaining offense. Dan Quinn and his defense are very, very good. Dak Prescott has shown some limitations. You know, they can't move on from Dak Prescott's the massive contract. So what can you do? Surround him with loads and loads of skilled players. They've already brought in Brandon Cooks. They've lost uh, Zeke Elliott. 
go and give him Jameer Gibbs. Can play receiver, can play running back, could be a superstar for the Cowboys if they work that properly. So, so the Seahawks at 27, I am going to have them, obviously, because they've gone quarterback with Anthony Richardson, the first pick. So I'm going to have them taking an edge with their second pick, Will McDonald. I mean, I think Darnell Wright's the best tackle in, in the draft. Will McDonald, and, and let's not forget, Darnell Wright shut down Will Anderson for Tennessee in the SEC. Will McDonald went to the senior bowl and beat Darnell Wright like a drum. Great length, great agility, great burst. He could be Seattle's answer to Brian Burns. And I think they could have a lot of interest in him. So you don't get Will Anderson at the top. Now, I think a lot of people with the Seahawks, if you don't go defender at five, it's almost like that's it. Like the, the Seahawks are banned from making any defensive picks unless they take a defender at five. I would not rule out Will McDonald having a, a more productive career than Will Anderson as an edge rusher. So you, you can still take an edge rusher if you don't get Will Anderson with the number five pick. And that's what I've got to do in here. So now you've got an edge rusher who's very, very talented, who's a scheme fit. And you've got Anthony Richardson. So I think that makes some sense. 28, Cincinnati. Really does feel like a tight end is going to be a strong option for them. I'm also going to have, so Dalton Kincaid goes to the Bengals. 29 for the Saints. I have got them taking a tight end as well. Darnell Washington, who had a very good combine. Number 30, Philadelphia. I think this could be, an, they lost both safeties in free agency. So I've got them taking Brian Branch at number 30. And then a, a final trade to end the first round. I am going to have the Tennessee Titans trading up with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this trade should only cost 72, but again, I'm going to fudge it. Let's just pretend, whatever, to get the Titans up to 31. I think this is a realistic thing that someone's going to do. I, I spoke to somebody about Hendon Hooker and they said second round. And then just as they were finishing the sentence, they went, actually, do you know what? I could see somebody trading into the, the very end of the, of the first round to get the fifth year option on the contract. Tennessee Titans, he's the hometown favorite, having had a great career at, at Tennessee. He could sit for a year behind Ryan Tannehill. I'm going to have them taking Hendon Hooker. I don't think Malik Willis is the future. I think they know that as well, which is why they brought some guy off the street last year to play quarterback instead of Malik Willis. So Hennon Hooker at 31 to the Titans and move up uh, into the back end of the first round and the Chiefs move down. So into round two and I'm going to have the Chicago Bears taking defender with the first pick here. I'm going to have them take Marzi Smith. First pick in round two. Nose tackle solidify that interior for the Bears who've got a haul of picks on day two because of their trades. Houston at 34 or 33, rather. Uh, I'm going to have them take Zay Flowers here with the hope and intention that he could be a bit of a Debo Samuel for them. Of course, they're installing the, the Niners offense in Houston. Arizona Cardinals at 34. They get a, a pass rusher in the first round. They come back and take Kelly Ringo. Big, tall, very athletic cornerback at number 34. Colts at 35. They need explosion. They need dynamism in their passing game. They've got Will Levis with a big arm. Give him Josh Downs who can get downfield in high point better than anybody else. Great pick for the Colts here. 36, LA Rams. They've lost Jalen Ramsey. Let's give him a cornerback replacement. Emmanuel Forbes. I think I agree with Pro Football Network that he's more round two, round three. He's getting a lot of first round buzz though, so we'll put him here. Interceptions can take the ball away. Let's have them go into 36 to the Rams. 37 to the Seahawks. A lot of buzz that they're very focused on the centres. Could have put Joe Tipman with them at the end of the uh, first round. So I've got them going pass rush because they go quarterback first. But Tipman's still there at 37. Apparently Steve Hutchinson went to work him out. I thought they'd go for shorter centres. And this is why I've been focusing on Schmitz and Weipler. Because Pete Carroll at the owners' meeting last year said they want a shorter centre for the leverage. But if they're going to work in Joe Tipman out, and he ran a 4-3-1 short shuttle apparently last year, which is incredible. You know, if, if people are wondering why he's being talked about as a potential first rounder, that's why. Lot of lot of potential there. And um, look, 
they've sent Steve Hutchinson to go and work it out for a reason. So I think there's a good chance that that that, that he or Schmitz will be taken in the first round. And if not, they might wait till 37 to take one. So you know, what, what have you essentially got? You've got a quarterback of the future, you've got a pass rusher off the edge, and you've got a center who can can come in and start quickly at, at 37. So I think that's a good top 40 for the Seahawks. 38 for the Raiders. I really like this tight end, Luke Musgrave. People have got a bit quiet on him because the testing wasn't quite as good as expected. He didn't play a lot of football last year, but he's still a very talented player. Panthers, receiver, Quentin Johnson here. They've got some shorter receivers. They've got some older receivers, but they need someone like Quentin Johnson uh, to go and catch passes from Bryce Young. Saints at 40. Defensive tackle, Keanu Benton. Can play nose, can play three. Very talented player. Probably a very similar grade to Marcy Smith. Chiefs having moved down with uh, the Titans. Let's have them taking another explosive player. They've lost uh, Juju Smith-Schuster at receiver. Let's give them Jordan Addison at 41. Two picks for the Jets. They need a defensive tackle. Brian Brissy, I don't think he's uh, as good as some people do. I think a lot of inconsistency on tape struggles to stay healthy, but he's the kind of player that I can imagine the Jets taking a chance on here. And they also need a centre. And I think Cody Mork, even though he's listed as a, a tackle, I think his best position is to kick inside to centre. So I'm going to put him to centre here uh, for the Jets at 43. 44, Falcons. Let's give him an edge rusher. Another one, add to the uh, rotation. Derek Hall, alpha male, good player. Packers at number 45. I'm going to give them Matthew Bergeron, the Canadian tackle. Very, very athletic player. Very athletic, can, can eventually replace David Bakhtiari at left tackle, could probably claim at guard or right tackle initially. 46 for the Patriots. Drew Sanders feels like the kind of guy that they would take to play linebacker. Good fit for the team and the player. 47, this is a pick that the Cardinals got from Washington, of course. A lot of talk that they they really feel like they need a centre. And with Schmitz, and Tipman and Mort coming off the board, perhaps they just feel like, do you know what? We're going to take Luke Weipler here and make sure that we come away with a guy that we like. Detroit, not the, the need that I think a lot of people think, but I think you get to this point and you're like, OK, talent could do with an extra tight end. I think Sam Laporte is going to go higher than, than a lot of others do, and I think he will be a top 50 pick. Steelers at number 49. I really like the one Jones, but there has been Tony Pauline's been reporting about this. Apparently, teams are really soured by the fact that he just called it a day after one day at the Senior Bowl. Yes, he did the combine workouts, but he didn't test and do anything. Has not tested and done anything at a pro day. Apparently, it's just kind of shut it down. Some players can afford to do that, some can't. And I think teams are irked by that. And and Tony's been talking about Dewan Jones slipping into round two. I think it's a first round talent. And I think his tape's really good. Size is incredible. Potential is incredible, but he might last a little bit on boards. And if so, that's a great pick for the Steelers. Imagine getting Jalen Carter and Dewan Jones to the Steelers. That would be a good, a good pair of picks for them. Tampa Bay, a player who seems to have fallen off the radar a bit. That's because he didn't he didn't do any of the combine testing. And the pro day testing, he didn't do that much. I thought the senior bowl, he didn't really look like he had a plan when he was rushing the edge. Very quick, good size. No counters, though. That could keep him on, on the boards of 50. Can you remember, like, in January when Daniel Jeremiah was saying he was the top defender in the draft? Never really explained why he thought that then and doesn't think that now. But anyway, 50th overall to Tampa Bay. Miami at 51. I think this player could go a lot earlier than this. I mean, I like Cam Smith and DJ Turner. I could see DJ Turner playing slot uh, for, Mich- uh, for Miami, come out for Michigan. And that'd be an amazing value pick. Seahawks here at 52. I am going to have them take Zach Pickens. Pickens has you know, run a really good 40. He's explosive. He's got fantastic length. He had a terrific senior bowl. And a little bit like Abe Lucas a year ago, he seems to just be flying under the radar. And he can play defensive end uh, he can he can work across the line depending on what the formation is 
He can be disruptive. I just think he's yeah, he's the kind of player I can imagine the Seahawks taking. His short shuttle was decent. So you've got a defensive tackle. You've got an edge to add to your defense. You've got a sense and you've got a quarterback of the future. I think you know, the, people are always going to have their preferences. And this is the problem with the Seahawks. Is that there's a, the fan base, if you don't do exactly what a, a given individual wants, they start screaming blue murder. But, you know, a quarterback for the long-term future, a pass rusher, a defensive tackle and a centre, you're not really going to complain about that if that's what the first two rounds are. And I think you've got some very talented players there. Bears at 53. Isaiah Foskey. You see, this is the other thing that we've got to remember with the Seahawks here. Will McDonald was trained by BT Jordan, their new pass rush specialist. They know all about him. And they've been a bit quiet around him. And I just wonder whether BT Jordan said, yeah, we can work with this guy. And, and the other player that I think he's worked with is Isaiah Foskey. So if the Seahawks don't take the pass rusher in the first round, they could look at someone like Foskey. Then probably Foskey is... Not a great 40, not a great split, not a great short shuttle. Doesn't really tick the boxes they look for with an edge. Well, McDonald does. So Foskey to the Bears, who've now got left tackle, nose tackle, edge rusher, and they've got two more picks in the second round. Chargers. I have got them taking a tight end here. I think a lot of tight ends are going to come off the board in the first two rounds. Took a craft. Very underrated player. Very athletic. Blocks well. Catches well. Great receiver, just an all-round tight end. Detroit back on the clock here. I'm not a good, a big fan of this player, but someone may well take him in round two. I just think he's very un unathletic. Oh, Cyrus Torrance. Not for me, but will be for some others. Jacksonville, I think they give a value here and take Cam Smith. That'd be, I mean, he could go in the first round. It, it's just hard to play some of these players. And there's a lot of players that you kind of want to put them early. You know, there's a lot of cornerbacks. What's the order they're going to go in? It's quite difficult sometimes to put players as early as you want to. Giants at 57. I think Jonathan Mingo is going to be a second round pick. I've thought that since about October and nothing's changed my mind. A lot of people are starting to catch up with Jonathan Mingo and think he is a very, very good player. So Mingo at 57. Cowboys at 58, continuing to add explosive options to the offense. I'll give him Jalen Hyatt as another receiver, deep speed receiver. Bills at 59. Trenton Simpson, more of an athlete than a player at this point. Fun enough would replace a linebacker in Buffalo who's moved on to Chicago, who was more of an athlete than a than a football player when he was drafted. So I, that kind of makes sense for me. He's got he needs a lot of work to become a complete linebacker, a starting orthodox linebacker in the in the NFL. He, he was at his best at Clemson, just basically as a specialist blitzer, like a, 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 almost like a Jamal Adams type. I mean, they tried to move him to an orthodox linebacker, which didn't impact games. So a lot of work there, more of an athlete than a football player, I'd say. Uh, Bengals at 60. They love speed at cornerback. Speed, speed, speed. Let's give him the aptly named Darius Rush. Bears back on the clock. Uh, they, I've got them taking another, another cornerback comes off the board here. A personal favourite. I've interviewed him. Great character. Very good player. Exceptional testing. Julius Brents of Kansas State. Last two picks. Running back for the Eagles. It's a bit further down. Tajay Spears, I think, is an exceptional player. Very exciting player. Given to the Eagles at 62. And then the final pick for the Chiefs. They love traits. And there are a few players who tested as well as Sidney Brown. So I'm going to give him Sidney Brown the safety from Illinois to finish the second round. So there we go. That's what I've gone for in this two-round mock draft. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I know you will anyway. Um, from a Seahawks perspective, you know, I, I think that's okay. You know, I, you, there could be players available that I don't think are going to be available that just look better value. And if you put them on down on paper, you know, I've done mock drafts myself. Where I've come away with the first two rounds, it looking a lot better than this, maybe a bit more exciting than this. But I think, it, you know, if they are going to take a quarterback at five, then I do think they need to take an edge and a, a defensive tackle with two other picks. I do think it's very likely they're going to take a centre early. So I think this does make some sense. And that's the kind of thing when you're judging these things, you've got to 
consider what makes sense, not just what you want to happen. And I think that does make some sense. Now, if Will Anderson's there at number five, as I said, I think they'll take him. If Will Anderson isn't there and Anthony Richardson is, I could see them taking him. So I'm not tied to quarterback at number five. I'm, I'm explaining to you that, you know, what I think they might feel about this. And the other thing you've got to remember here is like, look, defensive line is obviously they have to, they have to do some work on the defensive line, but the Seahawks have typically waited to the middle round to add defensive linemen. And, and who have you got in this draft? You know, is maybe Keanu Benson and Zach Pickens last to the third round. You've got people like Byron Young at Alabama, who I love. If he's there in the third round as a two-gap in defensive lineman, I think he's as good as anybody you could get in round two. So if you can get Byron Young in round three, I think that's a fantastic pick. If you need a nose tackle, you don't have to take Marty Smith. You could Cameron Young had a fantastic senior ball. He has got 34 and a half inch arms. He's big, he's solid, he's hard to move. I think Cameron Young's a terrific player. J Jacqueline Roy can give you some a lot of snaps as a nose tackle. Mora Ajomo, I think, is a very good defensive lineman. You know, as you get down the board, you've got Nesta J. Silvera, who I like. You know, there's others. I, I mean, Adetuima Adepaware could be an option for Seattle in the top 40. There's a lot of players here. So, you know, I think we need to avoid this idea that if you do not get Jalen Carter or Will Anderson or Tyree Wilson in the top 10, then that's it. The defence can't improve. It can. It can definitely improve. There are some good options day two, even day three. So we don't have to overreact if they don't get a top, top player, defensive player in the top five. So anyway, they're my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments section. In this Seattle mock, Richardson, McDonald, Tipman, Pickens, quarterback, edge, centre, defensive tackle, more defensive linemen to come maybe, a receiver, a running back. You can go and add some different players in those kind of areas there. You've still got a lot of picks. In this projection, you'd have two third round picks to go with your two seconds and your two firsts, a fourth, two fifths, a sixth and a seventh. So. A lot of picks still to, to add to other positions and, and fill out your board, fill out your roster and feel really good about this draft class. Let me know anything in the comments section, seahawksdraftblog.com for more analysis. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment in the comments section and subscribe. You won't want to miss anything on this channel or on seahawksdraftblog.com over the next couple of weeks. It is the place to be for great Seahawks chat and draft analysis. Until next time, bye for now.